Hey booktube, it's Kim at Middle of the Book March. Today's video is going to be a little bit different, a little bit depressing, uh, a little bit, uh, some disappointment. So I didn't put an intro in there. I wanted to get right into it and didn't want this, didn't want to make this video too long. So a little backstory. Every morning at work, I have a routine. I drink coffee and I read the news. I consume news by reading it. And what I typically do is I go to Google News, which basically just is an, a conglomeration of news and articles from different multiple different sources. And I have a section in there, of course, that has to do with literature and books and the literary scene, publishing, all that type of thing. And I opened it today. I am filming on June 2nd on Thursday. And I opened it today to find an article entitled Wallace Stegner and the Trap of Using Other People's Writing. And of course, it grabbed me and piqued my interest because this book, Angle of Repose by Wallace Stegner, is one of my favorite novels of all time. So I had, I opened the article and it's dated June 1st, yesterday for me, by Roxana Robinson. And the whole theme and point of the article is that Wallace Stegner plagiarized Angle of Repose by an author named Mary Halleck Foote from her memoirs and letters. And so I started to drill down into this. And Angle of Repose is the story of Lyman Ward, who is looking back at his family's history and uh, researching his great grandmother. Um, and she was, she emigrated to the West with her husband and uh, who was a miner. So they lived a mining life. And it he he fictionalizes um, his great grandmother's life of, you know, their marriage, their relationship. Um, I don't really want to say too much, but <laughs> it's basically the story of this Eastern woman traveling West after getting married and what happens to her life, what implodes, what is successful, how she develops as a character. So it was, it's a beautiful book and it's so beautifully written. Angle of Repose won the Pulitzer Prize in 1972. So, and I've read it twice. It's one of the few books I've reread. Um, but I was, I was instantly caught off guard by this because I had no idea any of this controversy surrounded Angle of Repose. Now I wanted to give you a little bit of history. Let's see, Mary Halleck Foote lived from 1847 to 1938. She died when she was 90, and she was an American author and illustrator. She was known for her stories and illustrations about the American West. And she was a woman who, um, she was born in Milton, New York, of English Quaker ancestry. And she married a young mining engineer named Arthur DeWint Foote. And they traveled west to Leadville, Colorado, Deadwood, South Dakota, and then Boise, Idaho, where Arthur originated a major irrigation project on the Boise River. And then um, to Mexico and finally to Grass Valley, California, where Arthur managed the North Star Mine and retired there. I'm looking to my laptop with my notes here. <clears throat> so... She was married to her husband for, oh gosh, 60, 59 years, I think. Something in that, almost 60 years. And she documented her life in illustration, illustrations, stories, uh, volumes of correspondence, and her personal memoirs, her personal thoughts and observations. Um, <clears throat> she was very well known in the publishing world at that time for her illustrations of the West and her stories. And uh, she lived a very long and content and happy life with her family and her friends and her occupation, all of it. Now, um, Wallace Stegner lived from February 18th, 1909 until 1993. He was a novelist, short story writer, environmentalist, and historian and is often called the Dean of Western History. He won the Pulitzer in 1972 for Angle of Repose. He also won a National Book Award. So he taught 
at multiple universities, including Harvard, but he ended up founding the creative writing program at Stanford University. So he is a giant in the American literary scene, academia, all of that. Extremely um, looked up to, idolized possibly, um, considered a master of writing about the American West. <clears throat> so, um, it, when I read, when I read the article, it, it was very clear that he found Mary Halleck Foote's memoirs and kind of pulled passages directly out of them. And it, it <laughs> I, it makes me almost speechless because the, the accusation and the level of plagiarism is quite high. And it's so disappointing and depressing because I, I feel almost stupid that I didn't know this already, that I didn't, uh, I should have known kind of a thing. Now, we're not talking about a major crime against humanity. We're talking about a scandal in the, in the world of literature and publishing. But for a reader, for a, a person who considers, you know, this book one of her favorites of all time, um, it's, it's so disappointing and it's so... Uh, defeating. Angle of Repose has been called one of the greatest American novels um, of the 20th century and it appears on so many different book lists of you know the 50 greatest novels you should read in your lifetime or the 100 greatest American novels or Pulitzer of course it's on the Pulitzer list and lists of the best American novels it, it appears on one list after another that's how I discovered it because, you know, several years ago, I was looking at 50 best books of, that you should read. And it and I was looking at lists on Goodreads and it appeared on multiple lists and I had never heard of it. So I decided, why not? I'll try it and just thought it was glorious at the time. Now, it, it was interesting as I was reading this New Yorker article and the, the article is fairly short. So I was reading it and it didn't it didn't carry a lot of detail as to how Stegner uh, discovered um, her her memoirs, uh, Mary Halleck Foote's memoirs. And so I was curious about that. So I started to kind of do a little bit more Google searching and I found a longer article from Alta, altaonline.com, and I'm going to um, put all these links down below for each of these articles. And he found these, he found her writings and her memoirs, her letters and her memoirs, which were at the time unpublished. He found them through a grad student of his. So um, it appeared, I'm going to read a little bit or I'm going to paraphrase a little bit of this Alta Online article and it says, uh, he appears to have become aware of her writing in the late 40s. Um, and one of his graduate students, George McMurray, interested in pursuing a dissertation on Mary Halleck Foote, um, he, tra he, not Stegner, McMurray, tracked down her descendants in Grass Valley, California. So um, in a 1957 letter to Stegner, his thesis advisor McMurray writes that he met with Janet and Tyler Michelow, who were descendants of Mary Halleck Foote. And they, he basically got permission to look into her life, um, to read the material, to read the unpublished writings, memoirs, and letters. And so he's collecting her out-of-print novels. He's working on a biography of her and taking the letters loaned to him by her uh, family descendants. Now, it's 10 years, 1957, Stegner wanted to meet with her family and about their grandmother. And so they they let him borrow some manuscripts of her stories and that type of thing. Um, so he's encouraging his grad student to complete her bio, a, a biography of her. Now in 1967, 10 years later, he Stegner writes to the family that McMurray has got pretty old and is no longer continuing with the writing into um, their grandmother. But Stegner is interested in continuing to read the material and make something of it, to create something, to write a book or that type of thing. And so they were, um, they were, you know, considering this and they allowed him to have access to the material. And 
he's very complimentary to them that he's reading her unpublished memoir letters and what are called reminisc reminiscences. I can never say that word. And he's eager to make something with it. And then he kind of goes silent. So in the meantime, James Haig, who is the grandson of Arthur Foote, encourages the Huntington Library Press to publish Mary Halleck Foote's reminiscences. And they agree. In March 1970, uh, the family, Janet, the granddaughter, receives a panic letter from Stegner um, saying, hey, you thought I dropped off the face of the earth. Well, I'm still here and, you know, I've been busy and blah, blah, blah. But he's already heard of the upcoming publication of Foote's memoirs. Uh, Angle of Repose was published in 1971, and her memoir was published in 1972, the same year that Stegner won the Pulitzer for Angle of Repose. Now, in this longer Alta article, which is dated uh, April 4th of 2022, and this was written by Sands Hall. So I'm going to include both of the links to the articles, like I already said. But she went quite a bit more into the history of this controversy, and she was involved in a theater group that was going to produce the play Angle of Repose. And eventually, members of this group started to kind of make comments about this, this controversy over the book Angle of Repose. And she's like, well, wait a minute, are you talking about the same Wallace Stegner? And they said yes. And so she started to research and came up with all of the information. So what does that mean for me? Well, what that means for me is I'm so disappointed and I'm so disillusioned is a really good word. Um, I am not a reader who is who very easily separates the art from the artist. And again, we're not talking about a crime against a person. We're talking about plagiarism. We're talking about, you know, appropriating somebody's life story and using it for your novel, which goes on to win a major literary prize, one of the biggest prizes. We're talking about not giving any credit to that family, to Mary Halleck Foote, to her lifetime, to the work she did, to the things she observed. And... In, in literature and literary circles, it's just taboo. You, you, it, you can't do it and you, you will be canceled. It's the, the word of today, but it wasn't the word back then. So is this a case of a well-known white male author appropriating the story of an unpublished, unknown woman uh, for his own purposes, for the purpose of fictionalizing her life to make it into a best-selling novel. I'm, the, the reason I'm asking that question is my previous video on uh, men reading women. Is this that type of a situation where he saw an opportunity, where he acted in an opportunistic way to take her story and craft this novel that he wrote? In the Alta article, the author of the article offers many different passages that he lifted almost verbatim. And uh, so, yeah, so that's where I'm at emotionally when in the book, in the bookish, bookishly emotional way that I am. I'm just, I don't know, I am just have a bad taste in my mouth about rereading Angle of Repose. And this was on my TBR for June on the Range, hosted by Michael K. Vaughn and a multitude of other booktubers, all of which I will link below. So what I've decided to do is I am going to pull Angle of Repose from my TBR. And I have several other Stegner books in my in my library. I'm, I'm still thinking about what I want to do. do. Do I want to remove Stegner from my library and my home? And I'm leaning towards yes, but I'm, I'm still still considering. So what I've decided to do is remove Angle of Repose from my TBR for June. What I wanted to do was to read Foote's memoirs that are since published. And the, um, the title of that is A Victorian Gentlewoman in the Far West by Mary Halleck Foote. However, <laughs> I, can't f I couldn't find that memoir for a cheaper price than $84. And I don't think I'm at that place where I'm going to spend $84 on a and very unknown memoir, which I assume I'm probably going to really love. 
But what I did find is a book called Mary Halleck Foot, Author Illustrator of the American West by Darlis Miller. And that is a book I will purchase probably for around $20. So I'm going to read that book in June for June on the Range in place of Angle of Repose. Um, and we'll go from there. Uh, once I can track down her memoirs, her published memoirs from 1972 for less than $84, I would love to get my hands on that. So that is my literary depression of the day. Now, ironically, I went on and I kind of uh, continued to Google this controversy and found a book um, written by Elizabeth Cook Lynn, and it's titled Why I Can't Read Wallace Stegner and Other Essays, A Tribal Voice, which was published in 1996. And she writes that he basically glorified the stereotype of the American West and was very comfortable in his place being called a master of the, the Western novel or Western literature. So I actually have that in my my online shopping cart as well and would love to read that one if I get it in time. So uh, let me know in the comments below. Be nice what you think of everything I was just talking about in this particular literary controversy. It's really depressing to me because uh, Stegner's writing is very beautiful and... I know that there are a few other people on BookTube who love this book, and it's one of their favorites as well. So I apologize, maybe so, maybe not, for bringing this this article and this topic to the, the forefront. But I know that I I wouldn't want to go further with it, with reading the book again. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.